Kei aku nui, kei aku rahi, rarau mai ki te hui. Ko me hinga rangi tēnei, e mihi atu nei, kia koutou katoa. Welcome to the hui, Māori current affairs for all New Zealanders. E tarua ki nei. An island under dispute, an iwi left in the dark. I rei rā, i kone mātou mai rā no, a i tō mātou tupuna i a manaia, ki i kone tonu mātou. We knew that negotiations were well underway and we knew that we were not being included in those negotiations. Ngāti Wai says the whenua beneath their feet is being divvied out by the government to settle cross claims. Those are some of the areas um, that historically uh, were very important to our people. Aotea is one of the important areas for the Marutuahu people. Um, of course, we acknowledge our whanaunga of Ngāti Rehua and Ngāti Wai, and we are closely related. We respect all their issues on that side of the line, and we are even willing to support them. But once they come over this side, we expect them to respect ours. We look at the battle for Aotea. Tahuti mai. Later in the program, we'll be speaking to Pio Tere about a very special kaupapa, Engari Mātura Ite Naipo. It's often said that the treaty settlement process uh, creates more grievances than it settles, and the island of Aotea is an, an example of why. Ngāti Wai says the Crown hasn't dealt with them in good faith, and the island where they've maintained their ahika for centuries is being used to settle claims with iwi who are no longer there. Tonight, a special report by RNZ Māori Affairs correspondent Tianiwa Hurihanga Nui and camera operator Claire Easton Farrelly. You know, I love, I love Aotea. I love the surrounding mutu that are around it, and um, and I, f I feel when we look at that. Uh, uh, I feel like I'm home. It's our home. Our Whaka Papa tells us we've been here for over five, six hundred years. Māori have been here for over two thousand years. It's our home. And when we hear these sorts of kōrero about other iwi, it's sad to hear. Beyond the calm waters of the Hauraki Gulf, turmoil is lapping at the shores of Aotea, a remote island known to many as Great Barrier. Its sweeping coastlines, rugged terrain and vast native wildlife sanctuary have been home to the people of Ngāti Wai for generations. But the iwi feel its mana here is under serious threat as land on Aotea is offered to neighbouring iwi for their treaty settlements. Because they fuck up up to us doesn't give them a reason to claim mana over our whenua. Ngāti Wai has a long history of land loss on Aotea. The Crown sometimes used military force to evict their ancestors from the island, leaving them virtually landless by 1894. For Komatua Opongawaka, the thought of losing any more land, let alone to other iwi, is inconceivable. Through colonisation, all the land was taken off us, the whole lot. We didn't have a ground of grass to stand on or dirt to stand on. Thankfully for one of our tūpuna, or our tūpuna at the time, negotiated for a bit of land for us to, to live on and support our whānau. So at that time, the, the Crown decided to give us land in the, up in the north here, which at that time they thought was worthless to them, you know. And so it wasn't enough, so they went back and renegotiated again. And so they gave us a bit more. And so here we are, you know, we're here. Now we're hearing all these overlapping issues. And it's sad to hear that because um, we have battles with the government or Crown over these issues without that happening to us.
Tension over the Crown's land offerings on Aotea has been simmering for over a decade. But land isn't the only thing it's negotiated with other iwi. Between 2010 and 2012, it allowed a group of iwi known as the Parehauraki Collective to officially change the island's name. We hadn't had any engagement with the Crown or anybody about that name, name change redress. We just accidentally found it and it really uh, stirred our um, community in terms of the, the shockingness of it being um, situated in the Maritua settlements rather than in a Ngātiwai settlement, and in particular in the um, Ngātiri who are Ngātiwai ki Aotea settlement. Oh, he rikwa rikwa. Uh, he mana nui te mana uh, whakai ingoa tapa wahi ne. I nga tapa ingoa koe te ingoa o te tahi wahi. He mana tāu kia, kia hua he ingoa mō taua wahi. Hei ki te noi ho mātou i roto i ngā pepa i muri ho. A, ka ohori re katoa Ngātiwai. Um, Nā reira ai, ka anui te pauri e uh, te rāpia ka riro a taua mana a e te tahi ki atu i a mātou. Ka horei te tika. The name change was just the beginning. Over the next few years, the Crown continued offering land on Aotea and other parts of the Ngāti Wairohe to neighbouring tribes without consulting with Ngāti Wai. Ngāti Wai was desperate to know the details of these offers, but repeated requests for information were ignored. October 2014, um, I think I made the first official Information Act request because nothing was provided and by this time we knew that negotiations were well underway and we knew that we were not being included in those negotiations. It was frustrating and um, perplexing as to why they wouldn't provide it. It would seem a reasonable thing to do. I pūpū ake au a āwanga wanga i roto ki au i a Ngāti Wai i oku whanaunga i runga i te motu i te kore aro mai o te tahi a ki te au e a, o Ngāti Wai i roto i enei tu a huatanga. A hakoa tērā e kore rau atu a Ngāti Wai e piko ki raro a, i reira i konei mātou mai rāno Ai to mātou tupuna i a manaia ke i konei tonu mātou, a ko o mātou uri whakaheke ka noho tonu ki o mātou ka hainga haere a kene. It took three years for Crown officials to give Ngāti Wai a detailed outline of what they were offering other iwi. Some of this information was drawn on maps, so Ngāti Wai could see exactly which plots of land in its rohe would go. Initially, Ngāti Wai was given just three weeks to provide feedback. I had difficulty sleeping at night <laughs> thinking about these things. It was, the Crown was just sending us letter after letter asking, say, this is the redress we're offering for this iwi, this is the redress we're offering for that iwi. You've got a couple of weeks to four weeks to give us a response. And then um, maybe a month later, we would get a preliminary decision from the minister that he's decided that he's going to pursue the original um, offers and then we get another chance to write another letter and then he, another month later he would say, oh, final decision, I'm giving them the same redress. After the break, we meet the man spearheading the cross claims for Marutuahu. Aotea is one of the important areas for the Marutuahu people. And ask the Minister for Treaty Settlements why Ngāti Wai were left in the dark. What are the reasons? Why did they have to wait so long? Uh, look, I, I, can't, I can't give a reason why, except that it did happen, and that was unacceptable.
Araki mai anō. Before the break, we heard from Aotea Mana Whenua Ngāti Wai about their frustration with the treaty claims process on the island. It soured what was already a tenuous relationship with the Crown and fractured their whanaungatanga with Maru Tuahu. Anei te wāhanga tūrua o tēnei rīpuata. I feel the Crown are masters at, at um, creating this type of confusion amongst wherever they go in the world, you know, and they're masters at it. And that's what it's done. It's not about the puti for us, it's about the whenua. Our tūpuna always taught us that. The Ngāti Wairo here is surrounded by water, extending from Tapika Point in the Bay of Islands to Matakana in Mahurangi, encompassing Aotea and all the outer islands. The tribe's deep affiliation to Wai is evident in its name and the livelihoods of its descendants. Opo Ngawaka spent many years as a fisherman on Altair and still travels by boat to get to and from his home on the outer island of Mahuki. Yeah, take it, take those with you. This is where he built his house and raised a family. A place he feels grounded in his Ngati Wai Whakapapa. For the southern boundary, for us, it was set a long way before colonisation, and it's down that Hauraki Channel. And, it, and you look out, and it goes beyond the horizon. And we respect all their issues on that side of the line, and we are even willing to support them. Mm -hmm. But once they come over this side, we expect them to respect ours. But iwi on the other side of the Gulf share a different view. Paul Majuri is the chair of the Marutuahu and Pare Hauraki settlements. He says the iwi they represent have always had strong ties to Aotea and other islands throughout the Hauraki Gulf. Those are some of the areas um, that historically uh, were very important to our people, both from a location of important areas, be they Wahi, Tapu or Pā, as well as our seasonal harvesting. Aotea is one of the important areas for the Marutuahu people. Um, of course, we acknowledge our whanaunga of Ngāti Rehua and Ngāti Wai, and we are closely related. Um, and that speaks to some of those um, important background and historical matters uh, between us through our whanaungatanga. Ngāti Wai does not dispute that neighbouring iwi can whakapapa to Aotea. However, Apirahama Edwards says Ngāti Wai has the only remaining living presence on the island. Ko it's not unusual for more than one iwi to have historic ties to the same area of land. These conflicting interests sometimes result in treaty settlements being challenged. When this occurs, it's called an overlapping claim, and it's up to the iwi involved to find a resolution amongst themselves. Essentially, the, the Crown encourages the settling group themselves to manage those um, overlapping interests um, between themselves and their neighbours. So the Crown takes the position that they are in negotiations to settle the claim of one particular group and that they can't settle anyone else's claims, only the people that they're negotiating with. But for iwi like Ngāti Wai, this process has been hugely problematic. How could it challenge the treaty settlements of other iwi when the Crown refused to tell it exactly what land was being offered and to who? Ngāti Wai repeatedly requested information about redress mm. being offered over Altair for three years before any meaningful consultation took place. So mm. why? What, what are the reasons? Why did they have to wait so long? Uh, look, I, I, can't, I can't give a reason why, except that it did happen and that was unacceptable. And... Um, in Te Arawhiti is dealing with Ngāti Wai on what I think is, is more of a good faith basis than it had done before. Um, 
Te Arawhiti and the Crown owes Ngāti Wai an apology for that, and, and that is being worked out with Ngāti Wai at the moment. Ngāti Wai has also criticised Maru Tuahu Iwi for failing to engage with them at the beginning. Yeah, I think in hindsight you could also always say, you know, we could have done more, we should have done more. And I think, again, that applies to any group. There's been no settlement that hasn't been challenged by uh, either hapu tribes within an area and those outside. In 2019, a damning Waitangi Tribunal report condemned the Crown for the way it treated Ngāti Wai during the overlapping claims process. It said the Crown should have recognised Ngāti Wai's interests on Aotea and was wrong to exclude it from consultation early on. Yeah, it was an ongoing struggle and essentially it took us having to uh, travel the length and breadth of the country to Wellington, taking with us our elders, our kaumatua, bringing some of the island and other parts of the Ngāti Wairohe uh, to um, present before the tribunal our nawe. And really it wasn't until after that that we've been um, recognised somewhat. And nārera ko te pātai ki a Ngāti Wairohe pērai. As a result, all negotiations among the Crown and other iwi over Aotea have been put on hold until a resolution is found. But the Waitangi Tribunal has consistently highlighted the Crown's failure to consult iwi with overlapping claims early or at all in the process. Andrew Little promises the Crown's processes will change. So the idea is to go much earlier and say, we're engaging with this iwi, here's a range of things that are on the table, can we have your input on this? What assurance can you give though that changes will be made because the Waitangi Tribunal has repeatedly made the same recommendations mm. that haven't been acted on? Yeah, look, look I, I accept that's what the Tribunal said. I, I uh, can't account for what did or didn't happen in the past. Um, certainly I have been concerned because I've, you know, I've, I've heard from the iwi themselves too that um, the overlapping interest process has to, you know, has to have integrity and it has to work on the basis that um, the Crown is supporting and sustaining iwi, not damaging relationships, because I think that is what has happened in the past. Dr Carwin Jones believes if the Crown wants to avoid any more division and anguish among iwi, it cannot simply be a bystander in the overlapping claims process. I think the Crown needs to see itself as an active participant in these processes because they are, ultimately, the Crown is going to be the one to offer the settlement redress. So it has to accept that it's a participant in the process and that process is being determined by tikanga as much as possible. The Crown can't force people to do that but to ensure that the right incentives are there. As a new day dawns on Aotea, Ngāti Wai's struggle to find a resolution continues. Over the next few months, it plans to meet with its neighbours across the Hauraki Gulf to better understand what their relationship with Aotea is. But the overlapping claims process has certainly taken its toll. Our relationship with the Marutuahu guys has not been that flash as a result of all of this and um, I know for example that they felt pretty aggrieved when the tribunal processes, um, the, when the Waitangi tribunal hearings uh, started. But as I say I think we're slowly starting to get to know them and overcome those matters. Paul Majuri is confident this fractured relationship will heal. We are Fananga, um, we have blood. We have shared history. We've lived together, we've shared um, resources together, we've reached agreements together. We've fought together. Um, so at the famous um, Battle of Te in 1838, who did Ngāti Wai call for for support? It was from Marutohu. After that battle, a hundred of our warriors lay dead and ten of their warriors lay dead. So we've paid the price of Whanaunga, Tanga and blood. Ngāti Wai is not alone in its plight to stop the Crown from offering land within its rohe to other iwi without engaging with them first. There are currently 16 separate treaty settlements subject to one or more overlapping claims and some have escalated to the Waitangi Tribunal or the courts.
As Ngāti Wai knows well, there's a lot at stake for everyone involved. Can you tell me why you've put so many of your resources, your time, your people into this fight? What's at stake for you? Is it mana? Is it land? It's both of those. I think our trustees felt that there was no way that we could just allow this to happen. Um, that uh, they were prepared to um, put in the effort and the money to take the challenge because this is not a new thing for Ngāti Wai, with the, especially with Aotea. This has, been, um, uh, this has been played out before. This is yet another Crown process taking more stuff away. Our tūpuna are buried here, and there's lots of them. And um, that's how important it is to me, and that means something to me. And um, without their footprint, we're, we're nothing. You know, they, they spent all their, their lives defending what, hoping to defend, or try to defend what belongs to us, and hoping that they'll hold on to that mana. And they try to defend that, and so and it's no different for us. Nā tianiwa hurihanga nui, rawa ko Claire Easton Farrelly, nō te reo irirangi o Aotearoa te rā pūrungu. Hei muri i ngā whakatairanga, ko kore roa hau, kia peo today. Every year, around 350 New Zealanders die of leukaemia, and the best tool we have to fight it is bone marrow transplants. Phil today knows all too well the devastation leukaemia causes. In 2016, he and wife Deb lost their pōtiki teina to the disease after a courageous battle. The today whānau are determined to spare other whānau the, the mamai they've endured, and stab, establishing trust teina to encourage more Māori to donate their bone marrow. And it's as simple as donating blood. Tēnā koe, e hoa. Ngā mihi kā koe. Is it as simple as donating blood? Well, it is. You know, I think a lot of people have thought, even myself, yes. um, 
uh, have thought, you know, somebody's going to get a drill and drill me somewhere where I don't want to be drilled and get the bone marrow. Maybe it's because, we, you know, we, we were brought up eating neck chops and stuff, but... <laughs> Uh, no, there's a process where you can uh, actually extract the bone marrow from the blood. Uh, I mean, there are other processes yeah. as well, but, it, you know, it, it, that's, that's how they do it. And the initial is just a swab. The initial is just a swab. To find out if you're the right match. That's or... right. And, and, and it's all about getting um, people onto the library. That's the thing. So, you know, we were... Uh, you know, we were up there in that cancer, child cancer ward and, and uh, you know, we'd hear of people looking, searching the world for a, a, a blood, a, a bone marrow match and just heartache, you know. Yeah, tell us the difference because if you're, say, Pākehā yep. and as opposed to Māori and Polynesian, you have a real different kind of database. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well what said. I'm going to use that. Um, well, if you've got that Pacific gene and you look at, and, and it doesn't matter how much it is, even if your great 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 grandmother, her Maori, uh, or her Pacifica, Pacifica, Arohamai, um, then you fall into that category. So um, the numbers aren't exact, but to give you an idea, between. Um, uh, for Māori and Pacifica, if you need a bone marrow, the library that, that you go to, or the mm. register actually, mm. is between, I think, six and 8,000, OK? And if you don't have the Māori gene or the Pacifica gene, it's 20 million. Wow. So our, and, and good on our Pākehā whānau and our German whānau and all the rest of it. That's cool. But um, we, we, just, we just need to have more chances. And it's not just for our kids either, mm. you know. Why do you think we... Uh typically opposed to, like, donating organs or total total, blood? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, are the, what are the stories you've heard? Uh, it's been a really interesting journey, and, and, and the corridor is getting even more interesting. Mm. Uh, for me, but I'm in a different position because we've lost a child, mm. so you do anything, mm. OK? Um, and toto is precious, and toto people, you know, people have this whakaro, and it's a good whakaro about their toto being precious, their tinana being precious, mm. and they want to, to know what's happening. And that's cool. Mm. And those people may never, ever donate blood, and that's cool too. Mm. But there's a whole heap of people like me are saying, you know, if this is actually the ultimate koha, wouldn't you give something away that is precious? Exactly. You I know? heard an interview you did with Brownie Gloin and he said oh. he had tapu te tina, and he yeah. that was his philosophy until he needed some blood. That's right. And then he's like, oh my gosh, I need to yeah. be able to give this koha to other people. Yeah. So is someone's bone marrow better than someone else's? Wahine rangatahi? Yeah, well, I think, um, and I don't know, well, you know me, I'm hardly an expert in, in medical things, um, but um, ideally, hetane, OK, for bone marrow, uh, between the age of 25 and 45, and they're going to have the best chance of, of being, you know, that, that strong prime marrow that's going to help boys and girls, OK? Mm -hmm. OK. And the other thing, too, is um, a Samoan can help a Māori and a Tongan can help a uh, Cook Islander and whatever, a Hawaiian, all those things. So We were just saying when when some of our whānau get their DNA and they go, oh, I'm Tongan or yeah. I'm, I'm Hawaiian and yeah. you're like, no, you're Māori. Yeah, that's right, right. Yeah, you're from Hokianga. So, so, so anyone can help. Well, the point is getting onto that database, right, and so that you have a chance of matching someone's. Yeah, you have a chance of matching someone. And we know people who... Um, looked worldwide and didn't find anybody. Mm. And the, the result of that is it's all over, you know. And, and um, I respect people's views, but w w when you've been standing at the black door, like we have as a family, and, and my son, to be fair, the beautiful Taina, uh, his brother, Dalton, our middle boy, was a perfect match, but Taina uh, didn't make it to that stage. Right. He was the perfect match. And that is really, really, really rare. Mm. OK, there have been communities... Uh, um, on the Taringa podcast, there was a woman there saying that her auntie, they tested 350 people in the community, couldn't find anybody. So we ju it's just about uh, blood to bone marrow uh, and to give that ultimate koha for us. And if this kaupapa can save one life, it'll yeah. be worth it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and it's interesting because what happened is we created an environment, uh, uh, an environment where... 
Māori and Pacifica were, were physically felt safe, spiritually felt safe, yeah. culturally felt safe. Next minute, we're turning people away at the door. So even though our association with New Zealand Bloods and Te Wānanga of Aotearoa, in this case, worked beautifully, that's not always the case. For example, we had these beds in a circle. Mm. People were chatting to each other, mm. finding connect all those sorts of things. So if you are a Tāne Māori or Pacifica 20 to 45, because you're the best, bone marrow, what yep. do you, how do you get on? How do you do it? How do you help? You just you just uh, go into you can go into anywhere and say look I'm here for uh, under the umbrella of uh, uh, trust tainer yep. and I want to donate some blood and I want to explore or discuss the possibility of going on to the bone marrow register they'll put a little swab in your mouth they send it off to the state it comes up here and and even if your situation changes you may never get called up mm. you may, may mm. never ever be a match and if your situation changes you but don't have to it. do it. Pardon? But you've done but it. But you've done it. You've give, given the ultimate koha. Time for us, you think, to have that kōrero with our whānau about being donors? Yeah. yeah. What do you mean? It, our, our, our wider whānau? Yeah, I think so. I yeah. think so. And, and you know, um, people go, it's not the Māori thing. Well, if we actually look into our mythical history, there are plenty of examples of us within our culture, too true, too true, too true. Uh, giving, giving of ourselves the ultimate koha to create life. Kia ora e hoa. Thank you for having us. Nga mihi. Nga mihi. Kua hikina. Te hui e hoa ma no horo mai rā. with support from New Zealand On Air.